Hello Shed friends, welcome to my continuity error. Oh shit! Ah! No! No, I am not okay! So spoiler alert, uh, this bike is back together, as you can see. Um, it's all back together. I may have to pull it back apart because I forgot to put a circlip on. Yeah, I won't make that mistake again. I hope. Uh, or does it run? Uh, you'll have to watch this video to find out in its entirety. Or, you know, use a little, there's a little scroll bar thing down here. You can fast forward and find whether the bike runs or not. Fuck you, Tiger Power. Fuck you. So this episode was shot totally out of sequence. I've had a lot on and I just did what I could when I could. Some stuff didn't get filmed. Uh, some stuff luckily did. Some of the good stuff got filmed or maybe all, it's all just bad stuff. It could just be a terrible video. Uh, but yeah, so it's all higgledy piggledy. Everything you're gonna spot like, wait a minute, why is that bike back together? And then suddenly the bike is pulled apart. Uh, that's because I'm not very good at this and I didn't have a plan. I just filmed when I did things and I wanted to get the job done. Is it done? Is it not done? Let's uh, let's go on this journey through time uh, together, shall we? So I'm gonna go with this uh, method of talking through these fast forward videos again. I think it's pretty snazzy. If you don't like it, well, that's a shame. So we've got the blue bike uh, bottom end with the 490 top end. Uh, ready for its new crank seals and some inspections and clutch work on it. 3D printed clutch tool to the rescue again. Well, I've never seen a black one before. That's very nice. That's uh, it's almost like new. I have a feeling this clutch might turn out to be okay and it's just uh, just adjustment. It might just need adjusting. Anyway, it had to come off anyway, so whatever. Happy accidents. So I thought while I was at it, I'd check to see the condition of the kick shaft. And look at that. Oh. We've got one of those good uh, non-splined, a full single piece kick shaft. That's good. Um, that means I can use my other shaft like this in the finished cafe racer. So two good bikes, two good kick shafts. Um, very curious to see how the rest of this assembly is then. Looks like this is full of good bits. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. So we're going to replace... Um, we're going to replace this spring. This can be a spare. I don't think it's terrible, but uh, that little bit, of, little bit of burr there. I don't know if you can see it. I don't like it. So I've got some spare kick springs. Let's pop that back together for the time being. Just doing a quick little bit of a QA on these parts here and everything checked out except for the clutch springs which I'll replace. Alrighty, so I've made this little pinion gear uh, little stopper designed to fit into place and stop the pinion gear from spinning because I've removed my clutch basket and cannot put a screwdriver in there. And the idea is I then, yeah, undo the nut. I think it's going to break, but I'm going to give it a try. So this will be the first test. Um, we're just going to apply power with a spanner, and yeah. Okay, plan B. Well, 
that worked. But I feel like that would have worked without, um, without holding it anyway. And we can test by Yeah. All right, so that was just a fun experiment to see if I could make something that would work. And yeah, obviously, as expected, it didn't. But I now have a pattern for the pinion gear, which is useless. You might have noticed in that last little bit there, there was a pulled apart uh, flat slide Makuni carburetor. I bought it with the intentions of putting it in this bike, but unfortunately it does not fit in the frame. So I'm gonna try and do some stuff, see if I can make it fit later down the track, cause I'd like to give it a go. But uh, for now, we're just gonna have to run the plain old VM38 that uh, these things have. Uh, which is fine because um, I can make that work. So rebuilding the clutch now. Uh, the fiber discs that I've got in every single kit that I've got are not the same as any of the fiber discs in any of the motors that I've got. So I'm not quite sure what's going on there. That's a job to investigate for later, whether it's a thing for YZs or something that happened uh, through the build, but the steel plates were right and the springs were right. So I built this clutch using old fiber discs, new steel discs and new springs. I also adjusted the clutch, uh, set it up all nice and properly as well, so uh, it should work pretty nicely when it's all done. Clutch side pretty much sorted, now time to mess around with the ignition side. Yeah, a bit of stuffing around with some tight screws, uh, trying to Quick little job to replace that seal. Um, some dodgy, some very dodgy drifting stuff. Well, it looks dodgy, but it's actually pretty legit. Works pretty good. Uh, put some RTV just to help seal uh, any moisture getting into that ignition side. And that's the motor put back together, ready to do a leak down test and see how that goes. Uh, Finally, a successful leak down test. You might have noticed that it still dropped some pressure and yeah, look, some pressure drop is uh, acceptable on a leak down test. Uh, more pressure loss is acceptable when you're leaking air out of 3D printed parts. Uh, I reckon I'm pretty safe. I'm gonna call this a win and I'm gonna stop leak down testing it and just pretend that everything's perfect and we're gonna then go uh, put the bike uh, into uh, into that bike. Um, yes, uh, which it yeah, like that. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do that. I have a feeling the next task will be quite exhausting. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna fix the exhaust. All right, so I've made up these two little tools. Uh, here's one I've assembled. It's got a Schrader air fitting in it and a hole through a bolt, a little TPU O-ring uh, and two little flanges. So this is the TPU O-ring. It's got two beveled edges to match the two beveled edges on this. So the bolt, recessed head, goes in, tightens up, against the o-ring and stretches out so the idea of this is these block off both ends of the exhaust pipe and then I can 
tighten it up, swell that o-ring out on the inside and then pump it up full of air, add some heat and pop out the dents in my pipe. Alright, so here you can see I've installed the uh, stinger end and the uh, cylinder end with the air compressor already on. Got the air compressor set to 30 psi. Let's uh, let's watch the mayhem. A little bit of a leak around that end. Um, but leaks are fine because all we're going to be doing is adding a bit of heat using that air pressure to um, pop these dents. So just showing off the dents that are in the pipe that I'm going to try and pop out. There's the main big ones. There's a couple of little tiny ones, uh, some crease lines with some dents. Eh, it's not a terrible pipe, but it's got some dents. So as you can see here at high speed, the uh, dents pop out pretty quickly there. Yeah. Unfortunately, um, yeah, the system, it works, but it, it does let go. So we let go at about 100 PSI in that first little setup. Uh, we've got the pipe almost finished, just trying to get one of the small dents. And that was at about 80 PSI. As you can see, the pipe is a lot better than it was. The big dents are practically gone. It's just a few little like crease lines, small dents that uh, need to come out. Uh, that one didn't come out at all. Bit of a quick clean up. Uh, this pipe's been on the bike since before I bought it. Uh, it's never been painted or uh, clear coated or anything like that. So it's been gotten a bit rusty over the years. And so I decided I'd give it a clean up and clean the external, clean the internal. So I made a new bung system. Uh, this one only a single taper. So as you can see, single taper on each O-ring, single taper on each clamp. And I put the Schrader fitting in the small side so it's less likely to fly out and bend the Schrader fitting as you can clearly see in this video. It's bent. Same sort of principle, but uh, single taper. So it's less likely to pinch and I can get even more grip on it. Yeah, both, uh, both the little and big are pretty much the same. Similar concept before, just different execution. So I had a little problem tightening up the inlet and seal. Uh, due to a little cavity between the the pusher and the taper bit, it separated. Yeah, that little uh, that little bit there and the other bit, it separated. Um, I'd originally designed this to use the short bolts that I already had. Turns out I had longer access to longer bolts, so I made use of them, clamped it up, worked pretty good. So this time we're getting a fair bit more pressure in there. Bit more heat. This time we've added uh, an extra safety feature. Um, it'd fail, uh, no doubt, but it might help decelerate anything that wanted to become a projectile this time. Uh, ratchet strap to hold it all in place. Luckily none of these safety features round two when needed for getting it up over 100 psi. Um, it all held together, nothing came apart, so that was a win. Uh, a lot of the dents came out that wouldn't come out before. Uh, a need to probably use a brazing torch for a bit more finer control on some of these small ones because that one there bulged out a fair bit. Uh, as you can see, the heat definitely soaked into this. This was uh, just from the air inside the pipe because I had the pipe uh, around these printed parts wrapped with um, wet towels. And yeah, as you can see, still affected by the heat in the short amount of time. 
So that was a pretty successful experiment on what can be done with 3D printing uh, in regards to repairing an exhaust. Uh, is 3D printing the best solution? <laughs> no. Uh, is it a solution? Yes. Is it safe? Uh, clearly you can see very safe uh, if you know what you're doing and do it like a mental uh, risk assessment or even like a written risk assessment. Um, yeah, totally fine. Uh, not a problem. Will work. Will work well. Um, I think a brazing tip would have been um, would have been better uh, to get a bit of fine control. Um, but I'd probably need a few more bungs printed to swap out as as the temperature soak affects them. Because um, yeah, PLA and TPU aren't really good at handling temperature. Uh, but anyway, exhaust's fixed. Uh, yeah. That, uh, that worked. In future, I would probably use steel. Um, I would make plates and bungs out of steel to to do the job. Uh, but you know, that's that's not what this experiment was about. A lot of what I deal with is what can I do with 3D printing? Because uh, robots are <laughs> robots are freaking cool, man. Uh, they do all sorts of stuff. You just go beep, and there's your there's your finished product. You just do something else while it's doing something. Pretty cool technology to make use for restoring uh, old dirt bikes or making cafe races, which is something we don't really seem to be doing on this show, um, despite the obvious name of building a cafe racer. But soon, we will do that soon. Oh, and I also painted the exhaust in high temp black paint to protect it so it doesn't end up all rusty and yuck like it did uh, before we fixed it time to do something I have never done before and that is to put back together a vintage enduro dirt bike that I've pulled apart. For those of you tuning in for the first time you can see in the background there the first vintage enduro dirt bike I pulled apart and I pulled that apart like 12 years ago and it's still not back together so currently I am miles ahead on this job than I should be on that bike because that's the bike this video series is supposed to be about. Ah, uh, yeah, so just uh, setting up everything, playing with the clutch, get the clutch done. Um, you'll notice that the carburetor mysteriously appeared on there. That's because uh, I didn't bother including the video footage of the flat slide not fitting. Um, apologies for my blue underpants hanging out of my uh, shorts there, but it's a lot better than looking at my plumber's crack. few little kicks just to uh, see how the compression is and can confirm retarded amounts of compression it is not easy to kick over so that's um you know that's fun uh, a little bit of video that we didn't get there is the painting of the exhaust the exhaust is now painted uh, the exhaust is now getting fitted with a heap of silicon, RTV silicon, to uh, hopefully seal it because uh, these things are always a nuisance to seal. Uh, I didn't need the spigot on this one uh, like I did on the last cylinder, so we'll see how this goes. It might it might blow out in no time, and I'll have to do something. Uh, on the home stretch now, just finishing off the last little bits. Uh, we're almost there, almost ready to ride. Uh, that's one happy boy. Very happy boy. All right, we're about to give this its first start. I promise I have not tried to start it before. 
I've kicked it over for compression tests. This is the first time with fuel and a plug cap on that we're going to try and start it. Uh, and currently we have a maximum temperature there of 18 degrees. So it's cold. It's cold. Nothing's been done. Uh, we're going to try. We're going to try. First kick. This is just in case it does start first kick. I don't think it's going to start. But well, let's see what happens. So. Fuel on, key on, because sometimes I forget that. Yeah, it should be top dead center, it should be over. Mm -hmm. Yep, all right. First kick. So I'm going to be a jerk and leave it at that for this episode. Did it start? Did it not start? Uh, leave a comment below if you're inclined to do so. I don't, it doesn't bother. I know what happened. That's what's important. If you know what happened because you got a sneaky, sneaky preview, uh, spoil it for the others, whatever. I don't even care. Uh, yeah. Anyway, see you next time.